Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Hemi, nice to uh, meet you, Rada, Ramadan Karim. I'm Eric Wahlberg. I am an author and a journalist. I worked for Al Ahram Weekly for six years in Cairo during the Arab Spring. And as a result of that, I wrote two books. The first one, do we have any visuals here? Oh, yeah, yeah. The first one is Postmodern Imperialism, Geopolitics, and the Great Game. Okay. About uh, the 20th century, how, how uh, imperialism started to decline, uh, was uh, faced with communism, and now it's faced with uh, Islam, it's the, uh, basically the uh, strong anti-imperialist force in the world. So that, imp that uh, pushed me to write something called From Postmodernism to Postsecularism, Reemerging Islamic Civilization. So that's my latest book. And I came across Himi and his wonderful site, 30 Mass Street, last year and uh, re uh, wished I could have been here in Toronto. I'm from Port Elgin in the sticks, so there's no uh, Muslim community up there. For, uh, well then, that would mean you're the Muslim community yeah, in Port Elgin. Well, there are a few Pakistani engineers at Bruce Power Station, but uh, they, when I went to their uh, Musali, they were very suspicious of this white, what's he doing? They just assume I'm a CSIS or something. And I got the cold shoulder completely and, and they gave me the party line uh, piece and uh, we don't approve of any violence and blah blah blah. And I thought, oh, okay, we got, we got this. So I, I came down to Toronto this year uh, to try and join him on a few uh, of his uh, mosque visits and uh, hopefully to interest uh, some people in my writing and to make some contacts. Else. And here we are. The um, Turkish Center tonight, the Turkish Jami. Wonderful food, very nice people. Uh, I hope more people in the future will pick up this this uh, tradition of visiting different mosques and uh, making the Muslim community more inviting and uh, more open. Inshallah. Uh, you've traveled around the world, you've seen quite a bit, and that will come out in your, in your works, in your book. Um, you were sharing something with me earlier. You were surprised at the reception of your second book. Mm -hmm. and uh, well, my, my first book, uh, Postmodern Imperialism, uh, had a wider, wider appeal because uh, it, uh, you could be a secularist and just kind of ignore the, my conclusions about Marx and Mohammed and, uh, that there's this uh, coming together. My, my, I firmly believe that, that uh, the only way forward is for the left to acknowledge its own weakness uh, in its uh, secularism and uh, embrace of uh, materials, and also for Muslims to be uh, more less uh, uh, rigid in their thinking. That uh, Marx was not really. Uh, the devil that Muslims like to portray him as. And uh, that, uh, especially with the fall of collapse of communism, the, uh, I think the weaknesses uh, there are clearer and uh, we should try and find the good uh, in the communist struggle and to combine it with the deep traditions of Islam to find a, a way forward. So, uh, yeah, the, I found that uh, uh, secularists really aren't ready to talk about spirituality. They don't like to think that postmodernism might be a, a bit of a, a boondoggle, and that in fact, uh, people are searching for spirituality in their lives, and that we should be open to that. So that, that was my experience. That sounds a little disappointing. Yes, uh, but uh, at the same time, I, I'm still writing, and uh, I have found a uh, very good response in the Muslim community. Uh, I think that, uh, wherever you can work uh, to uh, bring people together, you do that. So, uh, uh, and so, you are Muslim. I'm uh, happy to uh, spread the word in whatever way, whether it's with Muslims or with secularists. A uh, little background, you're from Toronto? Uh, from Guelph, uh, and uh, I 
lived in Toronto a long time, and I lived in Russia, and Uzbekistan, and then Egypt. And, and something and happened in Uzbekistan that uh, had, uh, there was a big massacre in Andijan in 2005, where a thousand or more Muslims, unarmed Muslims, were just shot down in cold blood by the uh, dictators. Forced forces and uh, it's a very repressive society. So I was impressed very much by uh, the fortitude and the uh, uh, just the commitment of those Muslims and I saw that uh, after communism the only way to develop a, a good society would be through this not Christianity particularly it's too weak not through Judaism, it's being corrupted by Zionism. Uh, it's painfully, uh, it's been painful this Ramadan, uh, yeah. witnessing that. Um, but uh, to Ramadan, uh, how is this Ramadan going for you? It's, we're on the night of the 27th. It's tough, uh, I find it, uh, I, I'm uh, not a teetotaler, I don't drink much, but I enjoy a glass of wine with dinner. And uh, for a month now, it's been no alcohol, basically, so uh, that's tough, uh, but um, that's good. I, every day, I, I can see the value of it. It just builds your, your self-control and uh, also puts things in perspective. It's a very, very uh, important tradition. I think that's what's the mo most... Uh, attractive about Islam. It's got a very difficult uh, and long suffering tradition that everyone must go through every year. So it's no other religion that I know of has that kind of commitment. Uh, so some people have are watching this and their mind might have just stopped that at the point that you just said a moment ago, you have a glass of wine and you're fasting. No I don't or or, or you don't or you drink wine. Ramadan. Uh, outside of Ramadan, I like a glass of wine. I'm not a teetotaler. Maybe I'll become a teetotaler, but uh, I'm not there yet. You're not there. Uh, well, that, everything's a work in progress. Yes, everything's a work in progress. New Muslims, uh, in fact, Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, told uh, his followers uh, that you must be patient with new Muslims. Uh, not expect them to be. Don't be uh, fanatical in your treatment of those who are not That that is a mistake. And I think, uh, as, a, as a born and raised Muslim, I I can speak for myself. I forget that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I I may not appreciate that, and uh, most of the time, when I do meet a newer Muslim uh, such as yourself, uh, uh, when I hear that, and that was my reaction a few seconds ago. So. Uh, we all yes. remind each other and and we all learn from each other and I, I was just reminded of that right now so so there's my uh, personal arc if you will <laughs> arc arc you know that you know, oh, in the, okay. you know I, I nice, corrected nice myself um, well it is the night of the 27th and the possible little till cutter it's one of the odd numbered nights um, does that mean anything to you yet uh, well I know that it related to the actual first uh, revelation, isn't it? That's, so no one knows exactly when during Ramadan, uh, that it was in the last 10 days, and that uh, the idea is to celebrate this first revelation with uh, a long uh, night of prayer and uh, thanks. So uh, that's, uh, and I know that Muslims feel that uh, this night is worth, uh, is it a thousand or uh, uh, any other? Night. So it is a very important night. I'm really happy to be here with you and uh, celebrating the uh, first revelation. And perhaps that's where we can leave it. Uh, for people to learn a little bit more about you and your uh, and your books, uh, you have a website. Yes, uh, just my name, EricWalberg.com. Eric Walberg. Dot com. Dot com. With no space. Just with no one space. Word, Eric Walberg. Certainly. So, Brother Eric, thank you for sharing a coffee with me in the uh, Mickey D's across from the Pape Jammy here at uh, Pape and Gerard Street in uh, Toronto in the East End. And I'm very happy that you sent me an email and uh, we'll continue our prayers, uh, Isha prayers shortly. And for people who are out there, 
uh, remember we have to be a little bit patient with our newer brothers and sisters and it's certainly something that's a good reminder for uh, for everyone. Uh, Assalamu alaikum brother Eric.